You let them buy you interest tickets, foods, gifts, and drinks. You look like a whore. And making a date seem to the same as turning a trick. Welcome back to Child Time Pod. It's your host, Red. I have a video today from Coach Craig Adam Reacts. This is a video that was suggested by you guys. Uh, it was a very important topic, and they really wanted me to cover this. So here I am. Dating directly links to prostitution and how it differs from actual courting. Hmm. Please like subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. Ciao. It's Child Child Time. This is a 50 minute video. I'm not going to do all of it. I'll do 15 to 20 minutes of it, most likely. And then uh, you guys just check out the rest of the video down below. I always link everything like I do. Dating today has turned into almost an all out assault by some women that claim that they refuse to have certain type of dates. I refuse to have a coffee date. I refuse to have and they'll start telling you what is a proper date. Some women go above and beyond, and they're the loud, vocal minority, and mm -hmm. they're the ones saying <clears throat> it needs to be Ruth Chris, it needs to be this, you need to entertain me, it needs to be balloon rides and helicopters and lighted candles on a sand beach, a private beach, right? It needs to be a destination, a vacation, and so forth. These are extreme, but there are some poverty-minded women that are on section fucking eight, and they want to be taken out on stuff. Now, you That's do true. hear people that are mostly Latinas, they typically aren't doing this they're typically like anything subway but this idea of that being he's not wrong i have the the latinas that i have dated have never really been like, oh i have to go to a fancy spot the asian women that i actually have dated are been a little bit more on that than the, the latin women a traditional date is a misnomer and we're going to disqualify that and we're going to put those type of dates in prostitution mm. because when you see where this type of date lands you where people say oh that's a long time ago things have changed ah, ah, ah. but they're also putting you as the traditional gentleman which is from the same era of that what they want you to do as a modern progressive date why can't men be gentlemen why can't men hold doors why can't men open my door why can't they pull out chairs that's going to come from this era. Remember, over here. But they're going to take this and say traditional dating here, which this traditional date back here is prostitution. Mm -hmm. It's prostitution or all out whore them, whore them. I do remember this back in the day when you took out women just to go on dates and, you know, to pay them to go out on your dates. Or to go fancy dates only, it was a form of prostitution. You took these women to fancy like dinners and stuff or fancy events just to be at your arms for the day. That's what it feels like nowadays with these women going about dating with just normal guys. So the woman that wants a nice dinner date would have been considered by the gentleman a prostitute and a whore. That's 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 what we're doing today. Mm. That's what we're doing today. And it's I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it, prove it, prove it. This is why everybody's saying that passport bros go overseas to trick and go overseas to pay for it, pay for the box and stuff. Motherfuckers, you're paying for the box too. Dating in the West is pretty much paying for the box. Unless you're a super chad. You can get dates and they'll come over to your house and you can bang them right there without having to pay anything. Rare, rare cases. But most of the time, you're going to have to drop some money and it's a decent amount of money. Right here, right now. So let me start right here. Let me see if I can pull this up. And I had to, um, I'm going to pull this up here, all my data. All my data. So women are saying uh, they go on the dating app. I'm marriage minded. I want to I want to get into a marriage. I, I want to be marriage minded and I'm looking to get married and shit like this. They're also hooking up. Yeah, we know this. But did you guys know? Did you guys know? That that in the times past, not that long ago, I know you guys think this is a long time ago. <laughs> this is only three, four generations ago That's that you could not. Coach, that's that's pretty long for most young guys nowadays. You could not get a hotel room in many places around the country 
certainly in the American South, sometimes in the Northeast, the West Coast was a little bit more liberal. You could not get a hotel room with a woman that was not your wife. I'm going to say it again. If you showed up to a hotel and you said, who is, who's the register? Who is, who is this? Oh, it's going to be me and this woman. They might ask you, is this your wife? If you don't lie and you say, no, this is a girl that I met on Tinder. If you go back, if you go back 60 years ago, they would not give you the hotel room. They'd be like, a lot of even places in Dubai now don't let you do that. If you are trying to get a hotel room with a woman that is not your spouse, you can't. They don't allow you. Uh uh. We don't do this here, sir. We don't rent rooms for you to come do scandalous, debaucherous things because people had a cold, right? So the no-tell motel, the Momo, became where people can do their dysfunction. Mm. But if you went to in a good standard hotel and it wasn't your wife, you could not get a room. Now, the reason why is they wanted to curb the debauchery. They wanted to curb the prostitution so that what we have today, it is fairly common that you can get a hotel room with just about anyone. Nobody's paying attention. And if they see you doing something, they just look the other way. Yep. You see what I mean? That is where we could say that in past times where women want men to be traditional. Well, you can't do what we do today very comfortably where we could just get a hotel with any skis or get a no tell motel, get a regular hotel, and they don't even ask you if this is your wife. That's how far away real courtship is versus prostitute what we're doing today yeah yeah the this is this is a big reason why uh our sub wanted me to cover this because the young men out there do not realize this they don't understand this because they don't actually know the history they don't know they weren't old enough to realize this was how things were they've just been told you have to be traditional but you still have to accept everything that women want they didn't realize traditionalness was such a way back then that is not even comprehensible nowadays for men. But women still force men to do this. Yeah. That is the truth. It's an actual fact. Now, let me show you this right here. I'm going to tell you this story. We're going to go through several articles. I'm trying to figure out which article I want to present first. Okay. Tradi remember, women, I want a traditional date. What dating looked like the year you were born. What dating looked like the year you were born. One of the first, uh, the rituals, uh, let me see here. One of the rituals of love, the first date is perhaps the most paramount and the most dreaded. Hundreds of questions surround the pivotal event. How do you secure a date? What will you do once you get one? And will your date think you're funny or stupid? And what is dating anyway? Like everything else dating, the often perplexing uh, sometimes revealing labor of love has evolved over the years. Keep reading to discover what dating looked like the year you were born. All right, it says right here, the word date, this is important, was allegedly coined in 1896. I know you guys think that's a long time ago, but in relative history, when people talk about traditional dating, traditional dating is not that old. It is, in fact, a new idea. About it's 100, 120, 130 okay, years let's old. Let's continue. The date came from, according to a book, Labor of Love, The Invention of Dating, the word date first popped up in a newspaper column in which a heartbroken clerk named Artie wrote that the object of his affection was seeing other people. Okay? In the streets. Accordingly, it says, according Artie, his, his love told him that other people were filling all my dates as in dates in the calendar. Okay, so here we go right here. Filling all my dates as in dates on the calendar. So the word date has to do, oddly enough, with the calendar. That's what I thought. With how many people you can fill in on your calendar, okay, as a date. So where did Actually, dating come from? It came from the calendar, all right? And he's saying he's... She's seeing other men. 
other men are filling all of the dates. Damn, they were for the streets back then. Holy. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this crazy? Continuing further. In the early 1900s, courtship was considered a public act. So if a woman wanted to get married and intended to get married, this is what she would do. In the 1900s, the early 1900s, a woman wants to get married. This is what she would do. Okay. Before the 19th century, most unions, heterosexual unions anyway, were facilitated by parents Mm -hmm. who would arrange for a male suitor to have a supervised visit in the woman's home. The goal of these visits were to evaluate whether or not the courtship could result in a marriage. Okay, this is the prior to 1900s, just slightly. As Beth Bailey argues in the book, from front porch to back seat, courtship in the 20th century America, courtship at the time was distinct in that it was a predominantly public act conducted in private spaces. Interesting. In other words, in the early 1900s, a male suitor courted a potential mate, female mate, in a private space which was the woman's porch or living room in front of a public audience, her family. You see this? And that is why I think marriages were so much stronger back then. Now there's no family involved. Women just pick whatever and (gasps) divorce. So it wasn't strange. We're going to talk about strange in a minute. Strangers, strange women. So a, suitor male suitor went to the woman's house they would go to the porch of the living room and they would have the family involved all right so that this stuff still happens now in cambodia if you were actually like cambodian born and you're in cambodia and you wanted a girl you would actually have to do this courtship you would actually go to her family tell them i'm interested in your daughter you would go out on a date with your parents and it's like a dinner and the parents are there too. You have a conversation and stuff and uh, they see if you match and they, they do it for quite a few days. And then, uh, you know, then the parents be like, okay, you seem like a good match. You, we were going to want, we we're going to require this from you, either a dowry or whatever it is, depending on the family, depending on what they want. That is the courting process. Men don't court anymore. Well, you have to be able to have a family. Mm. The two amendments Bam, okay. were made following the conclusion of World War II. So now, I'm sorry, World War One that flipped the traditional roles of courtship on its head. So the dating scene in the 1920s have been romanticized as a glamorous affair defined by flapper girls who were basically, um, uh, basically liberated women. All right, and so these were the first three or fours of the 20th century. Now, I'm going to skip ahead because they're going to talk about speakeasies and stuff like this. But it says right here, speakeasies, the eras of the male only pre-prohibition saloons were over and women started to patronize these bars. Courtship became a private event held in public, albeit forbidden spaces. However, with the advent of the liberated woman came the origin of slut shaming. So we're going to continue dating in the 1920s was also a uh was was all about public entertainment. So you're seeing it develop bars, speakeasies, and now couples who were lower on the social economic ladder were able to go out dancing and meet in free public spaces. In public spaces. All right. So but then we have the drive in movie, then the uh okay, they're talking about uh reading rainbow. We're gonna skip that. All right, dating success in the 30s and 40s and so forth. But now, before we tackle that, let me skip to over this over here. Let me skip to over here. Uh, right here. How dating has changed over the last 100 years. Dating became a thing. The concept of dating really began in the early, in the turn of the 20th century. Prior to that, courtship was more private and an unemotional affair. This is a big one. It was a private, unemotional affair. 
oh, I got butterflies and I want them to give me the tingles and I want to feel in love. I want to feel kismet. I want to have the love at first sight. Nope. It was all about, can he provide? Is he a good man? He's going to take care of me. He's going to be a good father. He's going to be a good husband. Those were the major factors. It actually, at this point, the early 1900s, it was just an arrangement, mostly between family. Women would meet with several men with her parents present to whittle the pickings down to the most suitable match for marriage, which heavily relied on factors such as financial and social status. When a young woman decided on a man she wanted to see exclusively, their activities as a couple took place either in the household or at social gatherings. At that time, there was no such thing as two young lovers going out on a date. All right, we're going to we're going to clear all of this up. However, things began to change when couples began to go out in public unsupervised. Still, the ultimate and very uh, apparent goal was still that of marriage. This stands in stark contrast to today's dating world when the topic of marriage may not even be brought up for several years. Yep. Okay. So they got the gentleman caller. What would happen? So this is where they're saying, what happened to gentlemen? Why don't gentlemen exist? Well, the gentlemen exist in a time where the first decades of the 20th century was marked by the figure of the gentleman caller. If a man was interested in a young woman, and I say this again, it says a young woman. I want you to pay attention. I want like you in to their pay 20s, early attention 20s. to this reference and the other article kept saying young woman. And I've been saying this since forever. The reality is, a lot of old people think they should be dating, and they should not be. Mm. Dating is not for old people. People Damn, are I'm ahead of me slightly. I'm gonna figure. I'm gonna. I'm gonna cover that. But it says a young woman, and also a young man. I, it's a young person sport. And a man. It says right here: if a young man was interested in a young woman, he would follow the proper protocol. Protocol on calling upon her, which meant that he would come to the family's home and hopefully be welcomed into the parlor. If he was invited back for subsequent visits, he would be free to come and call upon the young woman during hours specified by the parents. But as the years rolled on in the 1920s, however, this system quickly became outdated and unfavorable. Dating has almost completely replaced the old system of calling by the mid-1920s, and in so doing so has transformed american courtship okay this was the period where couples started going out for dates which also meant they started paying for dates oh i get where he's going Co true courtship did not require money did not require anything it was just get to know each other see if you were good matches that's what true courtship is it isn't a man like being romantic and doing all these romantic gestures for women that's the actual dating part that has skewed what courtship used to be. I see, coach. I see. Hopefully you young men see it out there too. Bear witness. Listen to me. This change, the rev uh, relationship dynamic between young man and young woman. It did. As now it was <clears throat> the man's duty to pay for dates. Whereas before it was a woman who decided the terms of the visit. Okay. Now, let me go back here. Okay, so we got a proper match falling in love. Let me go back. So now the gentleman caller has been replaced by a paying suitor. Ooh. Going out in public. Okay, so stay, stay with me, y'all. Stay with me. Y'all can't see the article. I'm going to share the article here. I'm going to read it off this one right here. Early 1900s, a date involving a gentleman call, caller is definitely chaperoned. Mm. Okay, so it says right here, a proper first date in those days involved the gentleman caller coming to the house of a woman who piqued his fancy, and the two would have visit with a chaperone in the room. Mm. That would continue on until a mutual interest was reached and a marriage proposal was offered. See how that worked? The courtship. And there was a proposal as soon as you guys made a match. So after that, 
is all towards a marriage, towards a family. There wasn't fucking around <laughs> and then a fa and then maybe you decide you want a family. You know, you decided you want a family from the get-go. There could be sexual tension involved, as anyone who's ever read Henry James knows, but the pace would be what we call today a serious slow burn. Mm. Dating is about going out and playing the field. So now we're going into the 20s, obviously, with alcohol prohibition, the flappers. We got cars. Now we got backseat of the Jeep. And we also have entertainment, mm. movie theaters. This is going to be important. It's going to be important. So in this situation here, in the gentleman caller, I want you to notice when women say, where are all the gentlemen? It says, in the gentleman caller era, a man would go to the house of the woman and the two would have a visit with the chaperone in the room. He did not take her out on a fancy date. Mm. That did come later in the 1920s. But before we do that, before we do that, we do have to acknowledge this. Okay. That during this time, prostitution was legal in much of these municipalities, much of these metropolises, many of these Gotham cities. Prostitution did not become illegal until around the 1920s. So at the same time, you have prostitution that is legal, but somewhat put over there. The good women did not engage in prostitution and thus would participate in courting. Then as you have this era of the flapper, it started to get murky. I and I'm going to show you what happened. I'm going to show you what happened next. This is going to be important. The charity girl. Oh, this is going to be interesting right here. Check this out. Check this out. Putting this on the screen. The word date was coined inadvertently, it seems, by a column in the Chicago radio. They're actually talking about the date right there. And it says, but when these single women stripped from their dependency of fathers and husbands began to court in public, police, politicians, and civic leaders were alarmed. In the eyes of the authority, it says women who let men buy them food and drinks and gifts and entrance tickets look like whores Ooh. and making a date seem the same as turning a trick. Mm. Shout outs to coach Craig Adams. That was amazing child. I cannot believe that that's how what gentlemen's were, right? It is an interesting way to see things, especially when prostitution became illegal in a sense and dating became sort of a thing that the two courtships and prostitution merged together to become dating. Oh, please like subscribe down below. I really appreciate it. And I'll uh, catch you guys next time. Ciao.